All right, so the last thing that we did was we published a post. Going back to our sheet here, the next thing that we'll do is we will edit the About page. Well, let's compare pages and posts, which we did already before, but now we'll get deeper into it. Go back to the dashboard if you're not there already. Back to the dashboard. And now this time click on Pages. Either click Pages or click All Pages. That's the same thing. Go to All Pages. And this shows me that there is a sample page already. But actually, I never saw the sample page anywhere on, on the front end. Right? I see these blog posts. Uh, I don't see a menu that has items. So this sample page exists, but it's not visible. And that's because the page perhaps is not on the menu. So we need to talk about menus eventually also. Uh, we can have different menus to display different content. And right now, in my case at least, I don't see any menu. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe yours is different. Do you, does anyone see a menu anywhere and it's a sample page? If it doesn't, that's fine. That's what I've got as well. But anyway, back here under pages, we've only got we've got this sample page. Uh, we don't want this, it's just a sample page, so to delete a page or a post, a couple of ways to do it. If you hover over the name of the page, notice you get some op, some I, uh, some links. You get edit, you get quick edit, you get trash and view. So you can just simply click trash and it goes to the trash. Very similar to on Windows or the Mac in that if you delete something, it doesn't go away right away. It goes to your recycle bin or your trash can, right? and then you can pull it back out in case you accidentally deleted it. WordPress has the same thing, so click Trash, and if you'll notice at the top here, we have zero active pages and one in the trash. So that's where you can go to retrieve it in case you made a mistake. So we don't have any pages. What we're going to do actually is slightly different than I've got on my notes. This is just to get us to a concept I want to work on a little bit later. Um, let me actually write something here. Eventually, we're going to have an e-commerce site, right? And it's going to have a home screen. What are some other good screens to have on a website that is selling something? Anyone have any idea? Contact. Contact. Actually, let me do something here. Let me type it in a letters that are visible. E-commerce site. We have home screen, contact screen. Anything else? Check out. About checkout. Purchase. What was the last one? Products. Products themselves. Yeah, we're selling products. We should have products page. So that's good for here. Uh, we've got a few screens that we should have for uh, our site. And these screens will not really change that often, right? You're not going to be rewriting the About screen often. You're not going to be changing the Contact screen. So that's why I wrote Screen here. But these should be Pages. So all of these will be Pages. Well, let me do it like this. Uh, can I back up? Yes. These are all going to be pages because they won't change often. And then we're going to have posts. And this is all going to be related to the blog. Blogs. So if you take my blogging class, some of you might be in there. Um, we talk about in there what you can write about. But if you want some quick notes and you can't take that class, uh, you, should, you should be writing at least once a month, once per month, at least 100 words. And that 
is just basics there. Take the class, we'll learn a lot more. But WordPress allows us to do both of these. And we already created a post right now. So what we're going to need to do then are create pages so that I can have a home screen, contact screen, etc. That's the big difference between posts and pages. And they're both, in, in WordPress terminology, they're both articles. Both of them are articles. All right, so here then in the pages screen, let's click here, add new. There's three ways to do everything, oftentimes. Under pages, we can add new. In the screen here, we can add new. And then also you'll always see at the top, plus new, post media page user. So there's always a way to do something quickly. Let's add new page here. And first we'll start with home page. And so let's write just a quick sentence or two about your site, but we'll get more complicated about the site in the About screen. We'll just say, um, I'll say Victor's Bakery is a family-friendly bakery in Eastlake. That's fine for the moment. Some simple sentence. Notice the page editing screen is similar to the post editing screen, especially at the top right where there's the publish box. But then notice there are no categories and there are no tags. Categories and tags are for posts, not for pages. This has something different, page attributes, order. I would say ignore this. You never need to change this. This is like for old WordPress 2.0, 1.0. We're using four. This was the old way of organizing items in a menu. Nowadays, it's just drag and drop. In the old days, we'd have to say, okay, this is the zeroth item, this is the first item, this is the second item. Don't worry about this anymore. I don't, I'm not going to worry about it so much that I will actually collapse it. Set featured image. We don't have any pictures just yet, so don't worry there. And I'm going to check out my screen options. Custom fields. I know what that is don't need it. Discussion. Hmm. I don't want people commenting on the home screen. That would be weird. I never see that. So go up to the screen options, top right, and turn on discussion, and turn off allow comments. Notice that's on by default. I don't want comments, so turn that off. I uh, won't mention what slug is just yet. And then author. Um, I've only got one author, so I don't need that. Now, the different screens, the different sections have their own screen options. So I, I might have turned on the discussion option over on posts, but now we're on pages. That's why it got hidden again. So as soon, as soon as you turn these options on, however, next time it'll remember. So next time when you work on another page or post, the discussion option will be active, and then you can decide to turn it on or off. Go ahead and publish that post, uh, that page. Go ahead and publish that page, and then visit site. Publish it, visit site, what do you see? Not the home screen. I wanted my home screen to be the home screen here. It's not, it's still the blog. So we want to set this, set WordPress settings, 
so that the home page that we just created is the home page, the first screen visible, not the blog. So we're not going to see any home page. We'll go back to the dashboard. Hover your mouse over settings and select reading. The reading settings. And look at the very top option. The wording is a little odd, but I would say, what does your front page display? Your latest posts like the blog or a static page? This is why whenever you write something new in the blog, it will automatically be visible on your home page. That's the default WordPress behavior. But instead, I want to, and you can decide if you want this or not, I, I'm going to decide to select a static page and then I'm going to say the front page will display my home page. So front page displays a static page. The front page is the home page. Scroll all the way down and or, or look down and you'll see the save changes. Now go visit site and see the result. Save changes, visit site, there we go. The home page of my site now feels like a more traditional site perhaps. It doesn't have a blog on the home page, it has a home page. Did that work for everyone? Does anyone need a little help? So You've got a home page. It looks very cumbersome. You don't see anything that anymore says home page. It says something a little more meaningful. We'll edit that in a moment. But that I'm just showing you there that that title that we wrote at the top, that's the home page that appears, that's the text that appears, I, I mean, um, above the post or page. And so conversely, the blog post that I wrote, now that's gone. I don't see any I don't see it anywhere in the menu. So very similar to this, we need to create a page, call it the blog, and we'll go back to those settings and say show my posts on the blog page. Let's go back to dashboard. Or also, like I said a moment ago, maybe a shortcut here, instead of back to dashboard, you can go over new page. We're going to need a new page again. The title we'll call the blog. And we'll write here, read the latest news in our blog. And as I said earlier, now that we've turned on the option of discussion, it's visible. And the allow comments is on again on this one. So true or false. We don't want the comments on a blog. It depends. Trick question. Maybe you don't want people to comment on your blog. But I would recommend, yes, you do want comments on your blog. This, if you take the SEO class, uh, is one aspect to getting traffic and ranking on your site that if people can comment on your site, especially the blog. So I will leave allow comments there.
click publish. Can I put this was a static page that the post go to? So if you have ten posts, is there one comment on the page for all ten, or should the comments be on the post? That I was I was going to address in a moment, but that's a very good point. If you've had some experience in WordPress, that's a very good point. So let me address it just one moment. Let's update that. Let's go over to our settings, back to reading. And we need to set this, don't we? Set front page displays a static page. We haven't said anywhere, we haven't said where will we show our blog posts. It, nothing has been selected until we select the blog. So now all the blog posts will automatically be displayed on the blog page. We've got a static home screen. If we save it and visit site, we're not quite there yet. We need one more thing. So it's a couple of steps to set this up, but as I said on the first day, we can use WordPress as a classic blog site in that the first post is visible on the home screen. That's what we have by default. We can set up a static page, which we've just seen, but we need first to create a page. We can have a hybrid, which also means we're setting our pages, our posts, on a page. So if you visit site, you don't have to do this, I'll show you. If you visit site, great, I put the posts in a page, but where's the page? I don't see any page, any link to the page anywhere. So, the last piece of the puzzle is, well, we need to define or edit our menu. There's no menu on this site. There's no menu for me to navigate to different parts of the site. So we'll go back to the dashboard. Or we can do it directly here, right? If you hover over the name of the site, menus, well, actually, let me show you. I'll go back to the dashboard first. And this is under Appearance, Menus. Let's go to the Menus. Under the menus here, mine says, give your menu a name. Let's call this main menu. And then create menu. WordPress can store multiple menus because all of this that we're doing in WordPress is being saved to that database we created a while ago. We never have to touch the database anymore. It's just working. And so everything that we're doing, all the text that we've written in the posts, the address of that post, the colors of the theme, the users and the password, everything is being saved in that database. And what can also be saved in the database are multiple menus. We might want multiple menus because let's say we have, I have Victor's Bakery, and I have my main menu with all of my menu items. But let's say I'm going to have a, a holiday sale. Let's say I'm going to have a Valentine's Day sale. I want to add a new item to the menu only for the month of February. So I can have a brand new menu here called Valentine's Menu. And that can be populated with different links. And therefore I can just switch from menu to menu as necessary. That's why we don't perhaps get a menu right away, because it can be powerful, it can be customized, and therefore in our case, our case we didn't see any menu, it didn't know what we wanted. Yeah, the main menu, there's no menu structure yet, before that we have to then say where will we display this menu? Because depending on the theme, the menu might be on the top right, the menu be, might be along the left sidebar, the menu might be in the center top, 
And so this says theme locations. We have two spots, primary menu and social links menu. Let's select primary menu. We'll display this menu in the primary menu area, which we don't really know where that's at just yet. Vis visually, we don't know where it's at yet. So we've got a new menu called main menu. We've got a place for it, and now we need to put things in the menu. There's no items in the menu. Well, on the left here, I want to add the blog page and the home page. Add to menu. Remember to click Add to Menu. Now we've got the blog and home page. Save the menu again. You have to click Save on this to update. And now visit site. There we go. Menu. The blog, home page. If I click on the blog, there's the blog. If I click on home page, there's the home page. The one that is highlighted is the one that's active. I'm on the home page, so the home page is highlighted. And then when I go over to blog, the blog highlights. Did that work for everyone? Does anyone need a little help? How would you find the menu? How would you what? Find the menu. Do you mean how would you make it visible? Okay, what's happening is when, when you were editing the menu here, you might not have selected down here. Show the menu in the primary menu. So even though I made a menu, but I didn't select the primary menu, now it doesn't appear. So make sure you've told it. We've got a menu. Actually, then display it on screen. I've got a menu, we've got the blog, we've got home page, but I kind of want home page to be the first item on the menu, not the second. And maybe I want to change the text that appears there. So we'll go back to edit the menu and edit some of those features. So if you go back to the dashboard, appearance, menus, I've got the blog visible first and then home page. How do you think I rearrange those? Drag and drop. I'm dragging the home page up to above the blog, and now it'll be in that order. You can also drag indented like this. So now that says that's a sub item, so think about this for later. I'm going to have products. And the default is that all my products will be visible on the product screen. But if I've got 40 products, people are going to be selecting next page, next page, next page. What I could do is organize my products into categories. And then I could put those categories as sub menu items of the products page. So when someone hovers over blog, it drops down and it shows cakes and pies and cookies. That'll be for later. But it's basically dragging a menu item below another item or dragging it back. So technically we should have it instead of saying the blog that would just be a new page that says you know, products. I mean, eventually, be, yes. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have a new page eventually, yep, yeah, that says products. Yeah. We won't create it just yet because that's for part two. <laughs> and there's nuances, so we don't want to create it yet. So to arrange this stuff is easy. And then notice if you click the little triangle, 
you get options, navigation label, title attribute. Don't worry about title attribute just yet. Navigation label is this is the text that appears on screen in the menu item. So if you don't want it to say the blog, it could say news. If you don't want it to say home page, oh, you need to close that one. You could make that say instead of home page, you could just say home. And any changes you make here, you have to remember to save. Did you say you could change the text and everything too? This is the text that appears uh, on the menu item. When you when you change that navigation label, that's the text. Okay, but you can't change the font or color or anything like that. Not on this screen, no. I thought I heard maybe a question over here somewhere. Yeah. All right, so I've got here home, and then I've got our blog. That's what I wrote. And then I rearranged the, the order as well. And I was just dragging and dropping and also then editing the options, navigation labels specifically. So now on our site we've got a few, we've got one page at least, and a couple of posts. But remember when we created the blog page, didn't I write something like keep up with our news or something? It does not show up. Notice that blog page is a placeholder to display the posts. So you don't have to write anything in the text area of the blog page. It's going to get overridden by the actual posts. And getting back to the earlier question about allow comments, that is also getting overridden. I told it to allow comments, but I don't see any, any way here to add a comment to this page. You get that if you click the title of the post, leave a reply. So the options that we had seen for the actual blog page get overridden by the blog content, the blog posts. And if you go look at the Hello World post, there's a there's like a a demo post. But we, we've got a comment from Mr. WordPress. Any questions so far? So going back to this uh, handout, we've made a post, we've edited a, uh, we've edited a page, we, we didn't do the about page, uh, we'll get back to it. I want to look at C, right here, add media to the post and the page. Okay, media is, uh, is pictures or, or video or sound. I want to add, I want to upload some pictures to my site so that I can use them in my posts. So let's do this. Let's go find some pictures online to use on our site. But this is a big caveat. Even though we could go, even though we could do a, a search, a Google search, let's say cookies, and I find a million results of cookies. All these great cookies. I will I, I would tell you from experience, don't use any picture. Don't use just any picture that you find online for your site, especially if it's a commercial site, especially if you're selling something. Because if you didn't take this picture, you don't know that if the original company that took the picture and owns the picture is very litigious. You don't know that. It's better to assume that they are. It's better to assume that just because I found this perfect picture from my site, and it's um, 
will look great on my site because my cookies look like that. I would not use their picture with a, unless I know that I can use it, especially for commercial purposes. So my recommendation is never search for pictures with Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever. I'm going to tell you a couple of websites that I recommend for you to go where you will get a lot of free legal pictures for you to use. So even though it's very easy to use any picture you found online, it's better to use the pictures that are already set up for you to use for these purposes. So one of the sites that I recommend, you're not going to find the same 2 million results, but you're going to find pictures that are okay for you to use. One of them is called pixabay.com. P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. pixabay.com. pixabay.com. Free high quality images you can use anywhere. So here on this search, I'll type again, cookies. I get 559 results, not 2 million, but I think I'm going to find some really good ones and ones that are safe for me to use for my endeavors, especially if they're commercial. Ignore the first line. These are sponsored. This is how they make, this is how they keep the lights on. Sponsors. Ignore the first line because it tells you top right here, sponsored images. Ignore those. And then what follows are some really good images. Look at that. And this is a weird one, but I could think of using it in a blog post. Um, so I've got some cookies. Let's say I want to, I want one of these pictures. So what we're going to do is we're going to browse a little bit this site, find a picture or two, and then I'll show you how to download it. Once we've gotten a couple of pictures, then we'll upload them to our WordPress site, and then I'll mention another site for, for photography. But any picture that you find here, let's say you like it, so click on it. You get all of this data and the listing of the other photos from this particular contributor. This is real people, amateurs, or maybe semi-pros. Um, uploading their pictures here for free. This particular artist or photographer seems to have a lot. But anyway, at the top right, we have different sizes to download, even super high quality print quality. That's like almost right out of the, straight out of the digital camera. You can print that in the size of a poster. Uh, sometimes when you're doing a Google search and you find the perfect image and you print it, it looks terrible because it was not designed for print. Pixabay gives you free, high-quality, commercial-use images, high-quality as well. I'm only going to need the uh, web-quality version, so medium is fine, or small is fine. So median, medium is fine, and I'm going to select free download. It wants you to confirm that you are a real person, and it asks you to type in that code, whatever yours is. Question? What did you get free download? Mine just download. Yeah, don't go to the don't go to some of those sponsored ones. So when you click to download, I believe these are being saved to your desktop, or no, your downloads. So uh, did you see on the top right corner the little pop-up that happened that said you downloaded it? If you see that, it's on that little down arrow. If you see that, then you can click on that target so that it opens the folder where you saved this at. Uh, it looks like these are being saved into the downloads folder of, of your computers when the window pops open. Mine at least says it's in the downloads folder there. Hopefully yours is there too. And again, as I said, day one, you should have a little bit of experience managing files and downloading on a computer at least. 
But mine uh, went over to the downloads folder. There it is, pastries, number 756601. So take a moment to browse Pixabay. Let's download um, three to five pictures um, so that we can upload them to WordPress in a moment. But also, I said I was going to show you some other sites where you can get pictures. Let me show you these other sites as well. Uh, you can also go to this site, wikimedia.org. You might have heard of Wikipedia, wikimedia.org. This is a site where we can look up free images as well. Again, it will not have a million results for cats, but you should get some pictures that uh, should be useful to you in your business. Wikimedia.org W-I-K-I Media.org And we want to go to... Let's see... Uh, yes. We want to go... The Wikimedia is part of uh, Wikipedia and it's part of the whole system of wikis if you haven't heard of Wikipedia, it's basically the free online encyclo encyclopedia. It's been around for over a decade, and it's part of other such organizations. One of them is Wikimedia Commons. So you might look up quotes here or news articles and so forth, but we want Wikimedia Commons, which is where you'll find a variety of free pictures. So in, in wikimedia.org, then you can go to Wikime Wikimedia Commons. Here's a picture. And then search on the top right. So we're searching Wikimedia. I'll type again, cookies. Cookies by country sections of cookies, fortune cookie, oatmeal cookie, <coughs> here's some oatmeal cookies. I'm going to find an oatmeal cookie and uh, you can download the picture. When you click on the picture, you'll get a preview of it and then the down arrow here is the download button. Oh, this is nice. It has the cookie picture itself, and then also the person put the recipe. But I would say strike one, vegetable margarine. I think not. So if it says you need to attribute the author, you don't want to click on one of them? Possibly. So good eye. Some of them might tell you, you know, use it completely however you want. And some might say attribute the author or attribute the author the author, and it might just simply put their name, and that's it. Maybe it's the perfect picture and all I have to do is put their attribution and I can live with, live with that. But if not, then find another one that doesn't have that requirement and then you, you can still use it. So I'm going to download that one. So we've got Pixabay, we've got Wikimedia, specifically Wikimedia Commons. Show you one more and then we'll take a break. The third site that I recommend for legitimate images for you to use is part of an artist's website where people contribute photography, drawings, poems, etc. And there's one section of that site with free pictures. I'm going to show you the site, but only get your pictures from the section I'm going to mention. Every other section, don't assume that they're okay for you to use. So this is why I'm showing it last. We're going to go over to the site DeviantArt, 
deviantart.com. It's not as bad as it sounds. deviantart.com. D E V I A N T A R T dot com. If you get an ad, skip the ad. But uh, then, so as I said, people upload their work. Don't assume that it's okay for, t for you to use unless you go to this section over here. At the top, we've got browse. A menu on the left, Categories, Resources, and Stock Images. On the left side, Resources and Stock Images. In this section is where you want to be searching. Resources and Stock Images. So people might upload pictures, drawings, three-dimensional renderings, fonts, really weird things for you to use on your site. Um, notice you can further refine this. Resources in stock, 3D models, clip art, fonts, stock images. I'm going to go further in here. Stock images inside of the resources and stock images. And I can browse, or of course I've got search at the top, or a search on the left here. Search on the left. This one should keep you within this section. If you search at the top, it might take you out elsewhere. So, cookies. 4,000 results. Now again, I show this one last because I don't know why this one is under cookies, but uh, this one's good, cookie stock. And then you, you also check, you've got a download button on this one. This is not too high quality compared to the others. There's a download button on the right side. Alright, this one, just browsing a little bit more, and then this one is 4,000 by 300 pixels, so that's really high quality for print. And again, uh, read their item here, uh, <coughs> rules. Ask me first if you want to use it, please. Usually I give my permission, but I want to know what's going on with my work. Only exception, no commercial use. Oops, okay, never mind. So you do want to um, read that disclaimer. So not that one. I will be using commercial purposes. What about this one? Cookies. Uh, doesn't seem to have any restrictions, so all right. Oh, I don't see a download button on that one. Okay, when it says stock may only be used in on a DeviantArt, no exceptions, what does that mean? They're saying that if you take their picture from DeviantArt, you can only use it to create something and put it back on DeviantArt. You can't use it on your own site. Never outside, okay. Yeah. So this one here. This one says, uh, you may use this any way you please. There are no restrictions, so not even attribution. So great. I'll download that one. It's medium quality. So I'll click that one. So let's do this now. Let's take our next break. Take a moment to download about five images from any of these sites that you want. And we'll download them. When we get back, we'll upload them to WordPress and actually use them. It's 8.15. We'll be back in 10 minutes at 8.25, uh, and we'll proceed a bit more.